I want to go to Thank Congresswoman you. Kat Kamek, who's just back from actually voting herself on the expulsion measure, and Republican Congresswoman from the great state of Florida. And I understand you voted against, against expelling George Santos. Why? Well, good to see you, Harrison. Yes, Chad's correct. Under the Constitution, Article 1, Section 5, Clause 2, the House has earned members, including up into expulsion. That being said, for me, without a conviction, despite a damning ethics report, I am very concerned about setting a precedent that in the People's House, 750,000 people in New York's 3rd Congressional District would be left without representation. Mm -hmm. And so while we have so many issues to contend with in our government, I felt that it was inappropriate to deny those constituents in his Congressional District their right to representation. Elections have consequences, but they have a right to have their voice heard in the People's House. Look, one of the things he's been very vocal about is supporting Israel throughout its war against the, the bloodthirsty terrorists of Hamas who killed innocent citizens on October 7th in Israel. Uh, that war continues, and he's been very vocal and very emotional about that issue. That's one of the voices now, um, you know, as, as Republicans like yourself get together and, and try to figure out next steps for Israel from a congressional point. Um, that's one of the voices that gets quieted. Yes, I mean, certainly this has now become a, an even more uh, situ a bigger situation here in, in the House where now our majority is down to two and every vote certainly counts. But for me, this was not a political vote. As I said, mm -hmm. from the constitutional perspective, denying representation in the People's House, it is a very, very serious deal. And with the Tenth Amendment, states' rights, the states have the, t the ability to determine the time, manner, and place in which elections are conducted. They have determined that they were sending this representative. We certified New York's election. We need to make sure that we're honoring those constituents' voice. So it has not been an easy vote. It has been many, right. many conversations this week. Very contentious. It's a heartbreaking day on the Hill on both sides. You call it heartbreaking. It is interesting that this would happen before the case was adjudicated, which brings me to my next question. Yeah. What happens in a court of law? if the charges against George Santos don't stick? You know, that's a great question, Harris, and I think everyone has been operating under the assumption, especially in light of the damning report that came out of the Ethics Committee, that there would be a conviction. But so much of the no, the no votes that, that took place on the House floor just a few minutes ago were resting on the fact that this hasn't gone through the judicial process. And for those of us that are constitutional conservatives, we believe in the separation of powers. In the legislative branch, we have our process, sure. But now the impact that this will have on his court case Case. Without mm -hmm. a conviction, this is where people are really wrestling with this. So I think we have a long road to go. I, I now, now we see that there will be a special election in New York's third congressional district, and I think that will happen sometime in May and March. I'm sorry, February and March of next mm -hmm. year. So we'll see what happens. But since his expulsion has now taken place, we will have a new representative in the House out of New York's third. Look, I was giving our viewers a little bit of the color inside uh, the House of Representatives a short time ago when the vote voting was going on, you had George Santos sitting alone in the very last row of the House chamber, kind of near where he normally sits for votes. Um, he was sitting with his hands clasped, legs crossed, uh, a little slumped in his chair. He was described by our producers and reporters there and occasionally leaning his head back. I mean, uh, have you spoken with him since this vote? And, and what was his sort of demeanor before and after? You know, George, George has been continually a colorful figure here on Capitol Hill. To say and the I least. Ne to, to say the least. And I have never had a bad word with him. I, I think, again, the, the people that are sent here to represent their districts, they are reflective mm. of the different push and pulls in the country. So I know that this has got to be extraordinarily trying for him as an individual. But let's be honest, he has done some things that are not exactly ethical to say the least. I won't weigh into the legal aspects of it, right. but unethical at, at, you know, at, at its best. So I, again, I come back to the fact that we in the House, we have that constitutional responsibility to govern ourselves. One thing that I did caution my friends and colleagues on the House floor today was, listen, if we are going to take a stance that be, without a conviction that we right. will not expel today, 
be mindful on the other side, just like Americans around the country that are sick and tired of politics, if we have a Democrat that is put forward without a conviction, we need to step forward and have a consistent voting record here. I think that's critically important yeah. because Americans are sick and tired yeah. of the double standard, right? So that's, I think that's fascinating. Critical. That That is fascinating. And and we can't tell the future, but, but we know that people do all sorts of things. Um, but again, I, I'm going to be watching that case very closely with George Santos, because I don't think you write the ship then if those charges don't don't stick. And, and the ethics report, from what I'm understanding, was scathing. You're saying he even admits he's done some things. He didn't yes. want to go into detail about it on Fox and Friends this morning because the case has not come up yet. But we're watching all of it. Congresswoman, I really appreciate your time, your expertise. Um, how many of you, just real quickly, how many of you had decided before you were going to vote no to expulsion? Do you have any, not, any idea? I will tell you that I had so many conversations, dozens of conversations oh. with folks um, leading up to this vote and hitting the floor today. I would say there was probably about 45 of us that were really undecided. We had gone through painstakingly. This morning, I actually was pouring through the Constitution over and over and over again, discussing the legal back and forth. And I know several of my colleagues were as well. So this was not a clear cut case because, as I said, we have to stick with the principles. We have to be incredibly consistent in how we approach this. And so I, I had that cautionary tale for my mm -hmm. colleagues of mm -hmm. if you vote no, you got to vote no in the future. Well, and another caution is what are you going to tell voters when they say, look, he represented us. So now what do we do? Is you, that's where you started. It's an excellent point. Congressman, yeah. uh, Congresswoman Kamek from the great state of Florida, forgive me. It is wonderful always to have you in focus. Thank you very much. Thanks so much. Hey, everyone. I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.